Hey everybody, Coach Carroll here, coming to you with another interview today. Uh, you notice that I've been doing a lot more of these, and um, I always like learning from other successful entrepreneurs, as well as uh, having you guys invited in on on some great conversation. So uh, today I have Jennifer with me. She's the CEO of Cuddle Clones, and uh, when Amanda, my my assistant, you know, messaged me and was like, "Hey, I, I found this really unique business. I think it would be cool for the video," and she explained it to me. I was like. What? But then I went and checked out your guys' Instagram and your Facebook page, and it seems like you guys have a pretty popular business going on. So welcome, and uh, I appreciate you uh, spending some time with us this afternoon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, let's get right right into it. Um, if you can, Jennifer, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background, kind of where you came from. Okay. Uh, I grew up in a small town outside Seattle, Washington, and... Uh, was a math major in college, which was interesting. So nothing to do with what I do now. Um, but I ended up uh, in a career as an actuary. I worked on large pension plans and funding and a bunch of boring math stuff to most people, but I loved it. Um, and then I uh, moved around a little bit, lived in Florida for a while, lived in Chicago for about six years, and then uh, made my way down to Louisville, Kentucky, where I now live. So. Right on, right on. So uh, did you go, where, where'd you go to school at? Uh, my undergrad was at the University of Puget Sound in uh, Tacoma, Washington. And then I got my MBA at the University of Louisville. And that is where the business kind of got started. So. Nice, nice. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. How'd you get into uh, starting Cuddle Clones? And please, so so that everybody that doesn't know about it, please tell us what Cuddle Clones is. Okay, so yeah, the name is not really self-explanatory. I mean, it is once you've heard of it, but... Cuddle clones are stuffed animals that look exactly like your pet. And so what we do is uh, people send us pictures of their wonderful fur children, and we make a little plush version of them. Uh, we try to match all the markings. You get to pick all kinds of customization options, like lying down, sitting, standing, um, and a bunch of stuff. And so I had the idea back in 2007 probably. Uh, I had a great Dane at the time, and he was white with black patches. It's called a Harlequin. Uh, and I just remember kind of hanging out with him, and I thought, oh my gosh, it'd be so cool to have a big stuffed animal with you. <laughs> um, and, I, and I bought the domain name back then. You know, I came up with the name, and I'm like, oh my gosh, someone's going to steal it. But of course, that, that didn't happen, but I did buy the domain name. Uh, and then... <laughs> I kind of forgot about the idea. I mean, I know if you, your audience, you know, has a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, we come up with ideas all the time and, you know, you have your little pad of paper next to your bed and, oh, I think this would be a cool idea. So, you know, write it down. Um, I researched it a little bit though, and it didn't really seem to exist, uh, you know, in the sense that I wanted it to. I mean, there was a lady out in California that did it as a hobby, but she had a six month wait time and it was super, super wow. expensive. Like, I think she makes movie doubles a lot. So uh, not really cute and cuddly, but more like realistic so that the movies can use it for a prop. Um, so the idea was resurrected again uh, at the University of Louisville. And it was in the MBA class and it was entrepreneurship focused. So we had to actually go up in front of the class and kind of present what we thought were our top two ideas. And Cuddle sure. Clones was one of mine, and it became our class project. We had a team of about four people working on it. And we spent the next couple of years in the program working on the business plan, all the academic type stuff. And then uh, at the end, we did win a little bit of money in a business wow. plan. Wow. Yeah. So kind of yeah. like short take, but it's the schools that go against each other. And so then after that, we there were two out of the four of us that stuck around to if we could make it happen for real that was uh 2011 that we ended the program okay so so then it was like so 2011 was kind of like when you launched the business or was there time that you guys kind of like, well, when was like your launch yeah it was 2013 so it did take us a couple of years to kind of spend our money on consultants because none of us really knew how to make a stuffed animal um, right. <laughs> at all. So we just thought of vehicle product. Did teach you that knowledge? <laughs> <laughs> no. um, Especially with the math. No. Uh, right. So we went through a lot of consultants. Um, you know, we tried to see if we could make it in the U.S. That really wasn't feasible. I mean, unless, you know, you want to charge $2,000 for the product. Uh, so right. we did end up 
over in Asia, and we never really found a manufacturer that wanted to be our partner. So we did end up with a few prototypes that were pretty good eventually. I mean, after going through like three or four different kind of companies. So we at least knew that it was doable, but they're all used to making 10,000 of the same thing. Like they don't make one at a time. So they thought we were crazy. Um, But at least we had a few prototypes that we liked. And so we figured, well, if we can't find anyone to do this, I guess we have to start our own workshop. So I went to China for about a month and we hired some people with a translator. And now we have our own Google entity over there. So. Oh, wow. So you yeah. guys build their manufacturer, of it, but it's still like in the same company, basically. They are our employees. Yeah. So it's it's cool. It's really cool. So, it's, uh, it's, you guys are an international uh, corporation. So yeah, from cool. it's like, <laughs> how cool is that, though, to go from like people don't understand that are outside of entrepreneurship, the ability to take something that is just a cool little idea and then that grows into a multinational corporation. Um, you've got to be pretty proud of yourself. Yeah, I, we are. And, you know, it's always funny because when, when the company finally becomes popular, they don't realize, oh, well, it's like eight years old. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's right. successful, right? <laughs> for a long time. So. Right. So so then so where are you guys at now? Size wise, like employees, revenue, I mean, whatever you yeah. want to share with um, us. but. So yeah, I would I would be fine with that. Uh, in 2013, when we launched, um, we took a couple years to kind of go what I'll call viral. Uh, in 2015, we were on BuzzFeed and CNN.com and USAToday.com. And at the time, <laughs> we were forced to grow pretty quickly because at the time we were only making probably about 30 a week, okay. and then all of a sudden we had people ordering like 100 a day. Oh um, over well and our site crashed and and so this was about the span of a week that that happened but our wait time went from six weeks to eight months all of a sudden and wow. so we had to quickly figure out okay yeah this is a fun problem to have but we need to solve it pretty quickly but a stall problem yep. yeah <laughs> um so we ended up going through a recruiting firm in hong kong to kind of shore up the management of the workshop i mean adam and i adam is my business partner from Louisville. Uh, we had been doing a lot of the quality control, like still reviewing every picture and we needed somebody to kind of step in over there to really run it and grow it, you know, from 30 a week to two or 300 a week. Um, and so we hired a guy named Mark and he's Chinese, but what's nice is he spent about 10 years at the university of Minnesota. Uh, he has his PhD in industrial engineering. And so he was, he was perfect because he, he understood American culture, you know, I can speak this quickly and he understands what I'm saying. Like he's just like a peer for us, you know, who happens to be Chinese. And so it was perfect. And he's been with us now since 2015 and really turned it around that year. Um, and in 2013 or 15, we probably had about a million in revenue and we're up to about two and a half. Wow. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. So we crank out anywhere between two and 300 a week. Um, wow. it, it, it gets pretty busy over the holiday season and, and you know, they're not, they're not cheap. So they're your fur baby, but they're not cheap. And so a lot of people will save up for Christmas, you know, cause it's like their one big purchase for the year or something. Right, right. And so for everybody that's just now tuning in, we're uh, talking to Jennifer today. She's the CEO of Cuddle Clones. So uh, they take a picture of your fur baby and, and turn it into a cuddly clone. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, Jennifer, what's, so like how do you guys – I'm I'm always interested because, you know, BuzzFeed and, and those people picked you up. Well, did you guys go out and, and say, hey, can you guys advertise us, or did they just kind of find you and start putting you out there? You know, we, we didn't. I mean, we have reached out to different groups, but this particular one we had not. Uh, BuzzFeed picked it up from an article on gizmodo.com. I don't know if you're familiar okay. with that site. Yep. Um, yep. Gawker owns them. Uh, so it was just it was just a little story. And, you know, it's funny because since we've actually done a few more paid stories on gawker.com, and they didn't do as well as, like, the original one that was free. So yeah. <laughs> 
crap shit. You always hear about that too, and you know, people. Uh, what always cracks me up is when, like, you'll, you'll hear like somebody just writes their first book or something like that, and they're like, "Oh, I want to get on Oprah. I want to get on Oprah." And, and yeah. people don't realize the scalability of some of these outlets. And and like you guys said, you know, most times when entrepreneurs, you know, they have this dream of being there, like your your website crashes or something like that happens and you know those things that you have to grow through but um it's it's always fun to to probably it wasn't fun on your behalf but it's it's always nice from the outside looking in to to see like wow things really do go viral naturally and really do get picked up um so like what's your guys's main like main way of advertising now is it like through social media uh, a lot of it is. Uh, we will, from time to time, find you know a famous pet, so a pet that's got its own social media following, you know, and we'll make yeah. him one, and they'll share it. Um, we definitely like to try to share a lot of our testimonials um, on social media. We do have um, a little PR firm that does um, some celebrity stuff, so a couple celebrities have cuddle clones, and and. You know, it's hit or miss with them because you make them one and then they don't really know how to post correctly and tag you. Yeah. <laughs> or they, they make one post and then it's gone. And <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so that's, you know, hit or miss. But we do some uh, digital advertising, some retargeting ads. Like if you visit our site and then leave, you know, we may send you an ad later. Um, we do a lot with our own email list. Um, yeah. And then we have you know, a couple more outlets here and there. We, we try a bunch of different things too. Like we have some, we made dog poop bags with like a picture of a cuddle clone on them. And they're in a bunch of dog parks like throughout the US. And <laughs> nice. you know, it was a trade. We like, we approached the dog park. Hey, we'll provide you the dog poop bags for your dispensers for free if you know, you use ours or whatever. So we have a couple dog yeah. parks doing that. So. Nice. Smart yeah. is thinking outside, and you know that's, that's entrepreneurs, right? That's uh, that's why we make it is we think outside the box. Yeah. Um, what do you think? What was your, like your breakthrough moment of going, "Wow, I really think we have something here." Was was it the you know was it the the scholarship or you know the winning the competition with the business plan or I mean what what was it that really made like was like uh oh this is my apex moment here this is this is actually what we're going to be doing from now on. Right. Well, it probably was back in 2015 when we went viral. It was not the money that we won in the beginning. Um, To be honest, the one competition we won was just schools in Kentucky, and Louisville wins like nine out of every ten competitions. (laughs) Um, But it was super challenging for us because a lot of original people that, you know, we had looked for for investment, they didn't get it. You know, it's these these old guys that clearly are not our target market. And, right. you know, and they're like, I don't get it. Who would pay $250 for a stuffed animal? And, well, I mean, it appears as though a lot of people would. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, now I know. Now I can go back to yeah. them and say, hey. <laughs> Quite a few a <laughs> week. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so, I do think kind of that moment that, because we don't get a lot of awareness. I mean, a lot of people, that, that's probably our biggest challenge is you ask 100 people and they've never even heard that the product even exists. You know, right. like, wait, what? I can get that? Um, and, you know, maybe two people out of 100 might know. And so that's why when that article came out, it was it was very validating. You know, like if, right. if we can get the awareness, we'll get the sales. So. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, that's, I try to tell people all the time that that's, that is business. Like a lot of times it's not anything wrong with the business. It's just people, enough people don't know about you and not you particularly, but other businesses. It's, you know, people have to know who you are in order to swipe a credit card or write a check or place an order. So, um, yeah, that's cool. So, uh, what about your passion? Okay, is this something? Because you know, I, I'm in the same boat as you. A lot of a lot of my my fans know this, but you know, I started out with lawn care, and it literally was something my senior year of high school. And by the time you know, I started interning for myself my senior year of high school, so I was mowing grass half the day, and I got to looking at this, and I'm like, wait. I'm working at a gas station in the morning before school, and then I'm mowing grass for half a day, and then I'm either delivering pizzas or busing tables, and at the end of the week, I'm making more money working in my business than the other three combined, and so I chased the money in the beginning, and what I found out was I didn't have a passion for lawn landscaping, so like it quickly turned into one of those, like, 
I don't want to wake up and deal with this today. What, how do you combat that? And you know, what, what is it that you're passionate about in your business? I think, um, it's definitely the pets. It's not mm -hmm. so much the people. <laughs> well, they're very emotional. I mean, I love our customers, but they are all super crazy pet owners, you know, yeah. Uh, every single person dollars stuff animal, right? So it's yeah, well, that too. So it's, it's it's the emotional aspect of the product yeah. and the price, and you know everybody's pet is the best pet in the world. I mean, I would tell you my my dog is the best, you know. So, but I love the pets. I mean, I love looking at cute pictures of dogs and cats all day and weird animals. Yeah. Too. I mean, we've done rats and pigs and a whole bunch of other animals. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll basically pull on anything. <laughs> um, but it's 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 the type of testimonials that we get that you know we just can't make this stuff up. Like one lady ran into us at a trade show and she ran up to us and she was like, "Oh my God, cuddle clones! I have to tell you this." Uh, she was going to visit two children in Thailand that she was adopting, and she couldn't. So she has dogs at home, and she wanted the children to become familiar with the dogs before they. Wow. Came. Thailand. So she brought them two cuddle clones of her dogs so that the kids could have them and get to know them. Then when they moved, you know, in with her, they would recognize the real dogs and be more comfortable, I guess. So I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the best story in the world. Um, yeah, that is really cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it's things like that, you know, I mean, the content is so good for us, you know, I mean, it, it's, our social media probably does pretty well because, you know, we're sharing pictures of, of pets and, you know, people like pets, you know, we're not just making a pet bowl. So, so the content is definitely great. So we're lucky there, you know, um, but we, we, just would, had, uh, we actually just had um, Lacey guys. She just said, actually, I guess she tagged one of her friends okay. um, said, you need one of these for turbo. Roo. I guess the two legged chihuahua. Oh, so, yeah. um, we have yes. made some legged ones for sure. And I wonder if he has a wheelchair. Does Turbo Root have a wheelchair? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Lacey, does, does they have a wheelchair? Because, you know, so you guys, since you're, these are one-off custom days, right? You guys can make, like, like uh, if it doesn't need a leg sewn on, you don't sew on a leg. Right? I mean, that's be That is, know, that is absolutely <laughs> true. Or if we do a lot of one-eyed dogs, we do blind dogs, dogs with cataracts. Um, you know, if they have a scar... <laughs> Some of them have a tattoo in their ear. Um, so, Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Any, any so, yes. Yeah. So, it uh, looks like Ashley just got on here. So, uh, Lacey said, yes, he does have a wheelchair. He's famous. Oh, so, yeah. so, uh, so, Ashley, we'll, uh, I'll tag uh, – I'll tag Cuddle Clones, um, and, and we'll see see what we can do there for you. Yeah. Um, so, so what's the biggest lesson? Obviously, there's tons of – wow. I mean, if you went to China and had set up the operation, like that's – I'm sure that was a huge learning curve. Um, what – because here's, here's the thing. Like I know one of my um, – one, one of the business associates I know in the power washing industry – uh, he said, you know, one of the d toughest things with dealing with the Chinese manufacturers is um, that every deal is like a new deal to them. So it's like there is no, you know, there is that the negotiation is always there. Um, what what was like, because I guess I want to turn this into a two part question. What's the biggest lesson you've learned so far in the business? But tell me about that. Tell me about going to another country and saying, OK, well, I'm in the middle of starting a business here. <laughs> But we're also going to go over here because that's, I mean, you start manufacturing and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, I'll answer the second one first. So with China, so I had not been there, but I was lucky that um, one of our consultants go, goes there quite frequently. And he gave us one of his employees that was on the ground over there. And he spoke English and was a trans. And so he was kind of our translator. I mean, we know we needed employees who were um, what's called a plush designer, like a sample maker. Um, they have apprenticeships, like they're very skilled in what they do. Um, right. And so we knew, we knew we had to find some of those people. So the first day I got there, um, our guy, Jimmy had already hired like five people <laughs> and oh. we were sharing, we were sharing a space with another workshop that he had kind of set up, but they were supposed to have cleaned it out and they didn't. And so I said, well, we can't work in these conditions. So we went out 
the first week I was there and I personally signed a lease on a building and I have no idea what the legal ramifications of that was. <laughs> uh, so, but at the same time, we were also um, applying for the legal entity, which you know creates the business structure over there. Uh, my employees actually came up with the name. It's like Dongguan Hoi Chung Lee Company, but it stands for Together Pet Happiness. Like that's the translation. And so I thought like that was cooking cookie or something. <laughs> yeah. So that first day I was there, we kind of did a little PowerPoint and I'm just kind of showing them pictures and explaining what we want them to do. And we bought, what's nice is our manufacturing, our setup is really not asset intensive. So we had to buy some sewing machines and some material, um, but you know we didn't have to buy a $300,000 machine. I mean, those, those would be later, you know, as, as we grow more efficient, you know, we have invested in some machinery and stuff, but in the beginning, right. you know, we just needed the people. And because um, it's one off, you didn't really need a million square feet right out the gate or anything crazy no, like that, right? No. Um, so as far as, you know, negotiating with stuff, I mean, I had a guy who was my manager at first and, did, you know, he did the negotiations with like the landlord and some other things and the employees that we first had. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say the biggest lesson or the biggest, I don't know. I mean, I think just sticking with me. I mean, you know, there's people who will tell you, well, if you're going to fail, don't take 10 years to do it, you know, but if you really are going to succeed, I mean, you have to keep going. <laughs> there were some times where we're like, well, I guess we can just stop. <laughs> Uh, right. when we couldn't find a manufacturer, you know, I guess a lot of people would be like, well, I guess no one wants to do it. I guess we're not doing this, but you know, I mean, I knew that it could be done. I think, well, I pretty much don't take no as an answer. Um, but my other lesson would be to research everything yourself. You know, I see a lot of entrepreneurs, oh, well, I don't understand the legal stuff or I don't understand the financial stuff. I mean, that is not an excuse. Like you can't have other people, I mean, you can have other people help you in that, but if you don't understand what's going on, A, yeah. they may not be doing a good job for you. And two, you really do need to understand that stuff to make your business go further. I mean, I was lucky that I understood all the financial stuff already. Um, right. But the legal stuff, you know, whenever the, the lawyers wanna say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to charge you $5,000 to draft this document. I'm like, oh, actually, I found one online and I updated it. Why don't you just review this and like take one hour to do that? <laughs> yeah. And I'll give you $300. Well, <laughs> right. I mean, it's, there's a benefit to doing stuff yourself at the beginning. And, you know, in the end, when you're finally successful, your time is probably worth more than maybe your lawyers. I don't know, but. Um, yeah, and that's in the. I always. I always teach teach entrepreneurs that it's a moving graph, right? So in the beginning, you have more time than you have more money, right. and then as your business continues on, you'll have more money than you do time. And uh, lazy entrepreneurs never prevail. Um, it's it's impossible. So uh, kudos to you for for man. Like I, I love that you come up against that wall. Manufacturers are like nobody does this. We don't. You're, you're in the wrong country. You don't do one offs. Like I, I thought you were coming over here to order ten thousand stuffed animals. Like this is gonna happen. Um, in 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 true entrepreneur fashion, you go. All right, well, I'll just build my own. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, so let's move into the fire round. If you guys are just joining us, make sure you hit that share button. Uh, also, make sure you like this. That way, people can see it as well. I'm gonna be tagging. Total clones in the comment section when we're finished here. Uh, so that'll be pretty cool. But uh, so fire around five questions. Uh, these are just off the top of your head. Uh, number one is favorite business book. Uh, lately, it's bold. bold. Um, yeah, it, okay. it's written by a guy named Peter Diamandis, I think. Uh, okay. He is one of those people that likes to think boldly. And right now he is trying to start a company that mines minerals from asteroids in space. <laughs> so, you know, he's up there yeah, with, I would say that is bold thinking. <laughs> yeah, no, Elon Musk and, um, 
the Virgin Atlantic guy and, uh, you Virgin know, they Virgin? all have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all have kind of a, some involvement in this, but um, no, it's, it's thinking bold and how to convince other people around you to think, uh, you know, think with you about your crazy ideas. I mean, we have some ideas about how we want to grow, but, you know, some of our investors aren't, you know, they're like, ah, let's just settle into making plush animals. We're like, no, we have to go bigger. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so you said uh, investors, like, so you, do you got, did you guys raise outside money for this? We did um, back in 2000, early 2013, right before we kind of launched the website and the workshop, we raised $300,000. So not, not too big, but that lasted, oh. uh, got us off the ground for sure. So. Yeah. So, um, did that, that's something that now I'm starting to look more into, you know, I'm in business 10 years, you know, I've done, I've done loans and we've done financing from the banks and stuff. But what, what I find and a lot of entrepreneurs find is a bank is only going to help you so far. And, and what really sucks about that more than anything is that you prove yourself along the way, but then you go back to the bank and you need a hundred plus thousand dollars. And they're like, eh, I don't know if, you know, like I can only imagine, you know, like with my business, home services or media, but like I can only imagine if you walked into a bank and like, Oh, I need $300,000 to go open a factory in China to make one off custom <laughs> stuff animals of pets. Like you, right. good luck. So it, right. when you, when, when you raise the money, I know I'm kind of segueing out of the fire, the fire around <laughs> here, but uh, it's my show. I'm allowed to do what I want. It's uh, right. so when so with the uh, just because this is you know I'm I'm being a little greedy. This is my own personal interest. What was the most difficult thing for you uh, about raising capital? And if you ever notice, I don't ever ask for the good stuff. I'm always like, what was difficult? Because I want to I want to know what to look out for. Yeah. Um, We did a pretty good job. Most of it was people that we knew already. And so we didn't have a big challenge of, you know, talking to a bunch of people we didn't know. Uh, But I would say for those people, they didn't know me and they didn't know how hard I worked. You know, they always say you want to invest in an A team, but you know, in the background, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like the most A team you're ever going to get. And, you know, they just don't know that because they don't know me. So I didn't know how to convince them that, you know, I work 14 hour days and I love it, you know, rather than, oh, hey, I want to raise this money and I'm just going to continue to play around and, you know, not work. Right. Um, You know, I'm super frugal with the money. Like, I think we got a conference table after we were in business for like two years and it was my Christmas present to the, to the company. It was like, a conference table. you know, like stuff like that, you know, they, it's, it's, you're in a professional setting when you kind of present your idea to the investors and they don't get into the needs of like knowing your character. Right. So no, that can was see you can only say it so much, but you have to prove it. Right. So how'd you, how'd you get around that? Um, well, I mean, I guess we were convincing enough. I mean, we probably about 230,000 of it were people we knew. Um, okay. Like friends and family? Uh, friends, family, um, some people I had known since undergrad, um, a guy with a private equity firm in New York. He doesn't really do individual investments, but he did for this one. Um, so, you know, definitely good relationships I had gained over the years. Um, right. And he and knew it, my background as an actuary, so he's like, "Well, you're a pretty good thinker." So, <laughs> right. um, but yeah, I mean, I think we got over it, you know, for that last seventy grand or so. And and a few of them are from Louisville, so we touch base with them pretty regularly. They're from here, anyway. Yeah, how'd you guys? Because um, I and and I guess I probably should ask you this in the beginning because this it just got really interesting for me. How'd you guys decide how much money you needed to raise? Well, uh, that's always a crapshoot, I think, for most people. Um, I (laughs) am a fan of financial modeling. So I had, you know, kind of pro formas built out and you could change an assumption, you know, here and it would. And um, so, you know, you come up with kind of different scenarios and projected out how much we thought this workshop would cost us, you know, some initial marketing. Um, And then you kind of double that. Or, you know, <laughs> you know, raise it a little bit so you have a little bit of a cushion. And it's, it's basically a test. Yeah. 
I love it. I love it. All right, so back to the fire round, okay? <laughs> um, favorite place to travel besides China, I guess, right? Man, I've been a lot of places. Um, I would say Switzerland. Switzerland? In the Alps, like with the blue, very blue colored lakes. Very nice. And uh, favorite charity to donate to? The one I, I to ASPCA, but they're all pet related for sure. Um, we donate to different ones every month, but um, one that we like to that's local is called Saving Sunny. And Sunny's actually passed away now, but these guys help um, new pet owners who have adopted pets. Like they're basically encourage them to keep their adopted pet. So let's say they adopt a pet and they get freaked out because, oh, they can't afford the meal that they thought, you know, that they'd be able to afford or it's the dog is a little unruly. They'll actually come to your home and spend time with you and train your dog for free. Um, and, you know, kind of in the hope that you will keep this adoption that you've made. So, yeah, that's awesome. That's a good one. Um, where do you see yourself in 10 years? 10 years. Uh, I know that's so hard. It's such a hard question for entrepreneurs. <laughs> well, this is a pretty funny one, but I've always wanted to recreate the I'm on a boat video with Lonely Island. <laughs> I, <am a> <laughs> I, I want to come. I, I'll, 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 do it or whatever. I'll chip in on the boat riddle. <laughs> awesome. And uh, lastly, but not least, how can, how can people reach you? I mean, obviously we're going to tag cuddle clones in the, in the comments section, but how can people reach out to you? Yeah. Um, if they want, uh, I'm not, a, I'm not really on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. Um, and then they can email me. It's jennifer.williams at cuddleclones.com. Perfect. Perfect. And before we go, I think we had one more question come in here. Uh, did you charge people lower to start out and then raise them as along the way or always with a high price to begin with? Great question there. Cause I know that's difficult. A lot of times with brands, it's like, do you start a little lower to get started or how, how, how did you see that work out with your, with your business model? Yeah, that's a great question. And it was also very, um, academic in nature too. Like we've always heard, Oh, well it's, it's easier to lower your price later than to raise it later. You know, if you find right. out, you're really not charging enough. Um, we, in the early days, we did do a kind of a experiment with pricing um, at different levels. We started off at one nine uh, for dogs and cats. Other animals are different prices, but um, dogs and cats were one nine nine. When we went viral, people like would not stop buying. One of my colleagues was like, "Just raise the price. That will suit them." Um, so we did that, and we've never gone back down. Um, nice. Supply and demand. Um, well, it gives us room to do some more sales now and then. And um, it's actually a pretty good spot, I think, that, that we that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Jennifer, I really appreciate it. This, is, this has been great. I, I've learned a lot. I know people watching have learned a lot. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we'll make sure that we tag them down in there. And then, you know, heck, let's grab coffee sometime. I'm in Louisville as well. So it's, uh, it's always awesome to, to network with like-minded uh, business owners and, and entrepreneurs because we are certainly our very own breed. No pun. I, I fully <laughs> intended that. <one>. So, um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for coming and hanging out with us. All right. Thanks for having me. And definitely check out on our uh, website and social media. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Take care. Great.